So this is Shotcut, which is a free video editing software for your haunt. I'm Chris from Haunt Tech Tips, and we're trying to do something like this hopefully weekly, maybe every other week. Uh, we'll keep you posted. I do work in EMS, so my schedule's a little crazy at the moment, as you can probably imagine. I'm going to switch over here. This comes from shotcut.org. It's a legit website, legit software, although they are advertising based because it's free. So be careful when you go here to download it. If you just go click download, the first thing you see, that is an ad. Uh, sometimes the ads on here are not so great. But yeah, it's right up top, shotcut, download, and it's free, it's open source. They've got it for Mac, for Windows, Linux, all different platforms. And you can download it right here. It's all 64 or 32 bit. If you have a newer computer, it's going to be 64 bit. If you have an older machine, 32. Basically, if you need to check that, you can open up uh, computer information here. Go to my computer, basically. This PC. See, I've got all sorts of drives on here for video editing. We just hit properties. Excuse me. <coughs> Not Corona, just have a little bit of allergies. And you're going to see in here your system type, 64-bit. For video editing, a little bit more RAM is great to have. Uh, anything less than 8 gigs, this could be painful. Uh, I typically run with 16. Um, also, multi-core processors help. Not necessarily required just makes a video rendering process which is when you export a video at the end a little bit slower so get rid of these windows here so once you download install we'll open up shotcut itself this is what you see it looks a little complicated uh you've got all sorts of presets your help your projects all this you don't really need to worry about any of that. It comes preset. It's going to make MP4 videos, which is what YouTube's going to like. Uh, most platforms are pretty MP4 based nowadays. So you can open up a file. Although, honestly, I, I don't even go through that. I have, it's a drag and drop program. It's beautiful. So let's see, I'm going to grab a intro video that I have in here somewhere. Just drag and drop it right into the software. So now it's in the software. It's ready to go. So you don't even have to go through open files or any of that. Most of these options up top, yeah, you, you can do a lot with that. But for basic video editing, you don't need it. The program's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So here we have our timeline. And you can scrub through that exactly when you want to cut in and out. So you want to a portion of the video, you can just pull a portion of the video, whatever portion is highlighted on the timeline there. To add this to the actual project timeline, click it, drag it right down, and it's going to make the first video timeline on the project timeline. You can make multiple timelines on the project timeline add video tracks add audio tracks and i recommend at least having two that way you can keep your audio nice and separate the video tracks you can have separate tracks especially if you want to add text make things fade in fade out although you don't need to but we will so now i have my intro there i'm going to go ahead and grab a file with some audio uh, what do I have here? I have something pulled off YouTube audio library, ancient MP3. It's just going to play up here. Now, since it's just audio, it's just really kind of cool sounding. So we'll toss that down here and we'll throw it into the audio timeline. Now you'll see the file, the audio file's uh, about two and a half minutes long. You can zoom in and out on your timeline here. Makes things a little bit more manageable. Zoom back in a bit though. And I'm going to line this up. This one actually already fades in pretty well on its own. 
uh, something to note wherever you click at on the timeline time wise there's your time marker if you move anything around and don't move that marker it goes back to that marker kind of handy if you're editing in a very long video but if you forget to click well it jumps around on you but that's a decent fade in already however per se it wasn't such a decent fade in we can first split it playhead because whenever you add a filter in here which is something that modifies your audio modifies your video the filter is going to filter and put that filter on everything you're touching so I'm going to split that out right there. Filter, plus sign to add a filter. And just to simplify things, it's audio. So I'm going to go to audio filters. And there we go. We can do fade in. And for just a fade in, it gives you a duration meter. And if you look real closely, you can see that grayed out area is the fade. The longer you put, obviously, the longer that fade in becomes. Although we don't need that because this already fades in well on its own, so I'm just gonna hit undo. And that is gonna undo that cut, although the fade is still there. To get rid of the fade, we can either unselect that or just minus sign it and it all goes away. Some other neat filters you can add. There's all sorts in here. Just make sure you have the right file selected. So you can do your gain. Uh, a lot of the time I'll just mute the video audio from the actual video and then put on my own audio and post. Uh, personally, it's hot walkthrough video where you've got some background music, something like that. Or even mute just sections of it. You can really get in on the audio, uh, kind of like the Audacity demo. This lets you zoom in extensively not quite as much as Audacity, but if you just have, per se, somebody drops an F-bomb, you can do a split a playhead. Do another split a playhead. And for that one chunk of audio, you can add a filter and just add a mute. So now when it plays back, it'll silence that section of the video. Comes in very handy when, yeah, you do get the haunt customer that occasionally you get a great piece of video and, well, they may say something that's not exactly YouTube friendly because you scared them real well. So, easy fix for that. Let's zoom back out here a little bit. Now, Audacity, um, excuse me, Shotcut is pretty neat in that it's not only for video, you can also do images. So I'm going to go back to my folder here, and I have a couple, let's see, PNG files here, uh, PNG, JPEGs, uh, bitmap, it'll do them all. I just personally like PNGs. I'm going to drag that into my timeline here, drag it right down, and now as it is, it's just going to play that intro clip, then it'll play the picture. And that's it. However, you can drag out the duration of a picture real easily like that. And here's where it gets really neat. For transitions, per se, you want a fade transition. First, it does have to be next door to the next video. If I move this over and then try to do a fade, nothing. So once it touches, and drag it over, and however long you drag it over for is how long the fade goes. And this is both a video and an audio fade, although granted the image has no audio, so well, there's nothing audio fading taking place. But I'll do that. And then you get a really nice clean fade there. If you're doing you know, high action, high intensity video, faster fades are better. You can still do just cuts where it goes from one video to the other, but I personally like to fade even if it is a quick fade. You can make it more gradual like that. You can even do like massive fades. There you go. Further, just beyond that, there's another way of doing this. So I'm going to add another video track. 
And instead of fading that way, let me re-add that video track. I'm going to put my picture up here. And I see currently just hops right from one to the other. However, what we'll do here, go to the picture. We're going to add a filter. This time it'll be a video filter. And uh, let's see, let's do a fade in video. Now this is going to go a couple different ways. By default, when we do that, it's going to go dark. If you notice that everything goes black, video fades in. However, if you click up here, adjust opacity instead of fade with black, now it's going to do that cleaner fade where, let's see, try to slow this down a little bit just so you can see it more clearly. I'll just drag the timeline back and forth. So you see it's a real nice clean fade and it's much more customizable because you can customize the duration down to the uh, hundredth of a second there. So you can really be precise with this if you want to. Typically, I just, I don't even do the second track. I'll just crunch it together like this though. And you get similar results, but just a little bit less control. So there we go, we faded in to our cemetery scene. We're gonna open up another video file here. Uh, let's say, I'm gonna go to our clown car video, drag that over. <laughs> Now, perfect. So I've got my spot there. All right, and there is my clips. That is what I wanted right there. Drag it down. And you can do additional clipping down on the timeline. I just like to clip it up here because it's already right there, it's easy to see. You've got that nice incremental, in, excuse me, incremental control. But if I wanted to cut that down a little more, I could very easily put my marker right there, split it playhead, and then just remove the excess. Do a nice little fade here. And already we have our like it says in hacker.com, usually five, ten, fifteen bucks for a nice little intro. Now you'll see the one thing that happened there, that still clip was just way too long. So how about we do something with that? I'm gonna reduce the time on it a little bit and crunch that back over because that's just awkward if we make a fade that long. And you see what we did there? We actually, when moving that over, we didn't drag this, we extended it. So we went back into the video file that had been cut away. So again, I'm gonna do some undos here. And now instead of doing that, we're gonna shrink this down drag this over, and then mix it. A little bit of a learning curve with this program, but the undo button is always up there for you. But before I go any further, we're gonna go save the project. Um, this is a lot like Audacity where saving, I've already actually saved it once here, uh, Zoom class I saved it as. We're gonna save it, and it's going to be a MLT file type, which is just, I'm going to save as so you see it as if it's initial. That is a uh, media 
file that is saving everything you've done so far. It's not saving the individual videos, it is saving that this video is at this position and cut here and there. There's a fade here, there's a fade there, so on and so forth. And I do that at least you know, every 10, 15, 20 minutes because it, it is video editing software. Computers do crash when you put heavy loads on them. Uh, let's just see what the load on this computer looks like at the moment. I'm gonna go up here to performance. Hopefully you guys can see this. Say I'm using half my CPU and RAM using about eh, six gigs right now, 16. So yeah, if you had a four gig machine, you'd already be in pain right now. Eight gig machine, you're pretty close to bogging down. Uh, 10, 12, 16 gigs, you're pretty solid. So bring that back off screen. But there's an easy way to get around that because you're making a nice huge vid video render up here. If you want to reduce that load a little bit, let's do this, make the video smaller. And now the CPU has less video to process when it does the preview. But we have plenty to work with, so we're gonna blow back up some there. All right, so we're gonna grab a couple more assets to throw in here. I lost my folder, there it is. Going to throw on video of twisty <laughs> one of our guys was a very good licensed character one year kind of killed me a little bit that he was in licensed character costume as good as he was hopefully next year well actually uh hopefully we can get him back with a different character he didn't want to come back without it but oh well that's a different story I know you told them to come get me. <laughs> Perfect. So we got our clowns. Do a little transition to our nice clown character there. I'm going to throw in a sound effect. So to do that, I'm going to add another audio track. Uh, this is totally gratuitous sound effect. Totally not at all needed, but hey, why not? Um, I'm just going to throw it in right here just to show what you can do. So go back and do a little playback here. I see it just all renders and lays right on top of each other. First say that was a little bit too loud. I'm just going to click on that sound file. Go up here to filters again. Hit plus sign. Audio. And I'm gonna hit gain volume. So we can bring that down a little bit. And try it again. And there you go, a little bit more reasonable. You can also boost it up, but if you go too far, well, you're gonna get crazy distortion and uh, noise warning. And you see you have your audio meter up here, which you usually wanna be somewhere in the upper green, the yellow. When you max it out like that, it's going to distort. If that's what you're going for as a distorted effect, great. But usually that's not what you're going for. So there we go. Our levels are good. Eh, it's a haunt. So let's drag this out a little bit. We're going to go back filters. And we're going to look for... Oh, where is it? Where is it? Not all the filters have the names you might expect them to have. Um, here's a good one for you. High pass and low pass. These are fantastic. If uh, per se you're shooting video in a car or there's a generator in the background, something like that, this is going to be real counterintuitive. High pass takes out the lows. Low pass takes out the highs. So your cutoff frequency 39 hertz. So your human ear, I believe here is around 40 hertz thereabouts. Uh, that's where most headphones start out about 40 hertz. So we are going to, actually first I'm just gonna leave that as it was. 
at, oh, come on, do it, 40. <laughs> Not 401, 40, perfect. I'm going to play this back again. Say so not too much, but I'm going to take it way up and now listen to this horn. It's not even there because it was all low bass. So I'm going to cut that in half-ish. Take, uh, there we go. Hear how it's a little more shrill there and all you're getting is the shriller side of it? So yeah, per se, you have that rumbling in the background. You can just run your high pass filter and that will take out any rumbling in the background. So I'm gonna take that off though. And uh, sorry for the brain fart. I'm gonna go over here to properties for this audio clip and speed and duration. So you can adjust either one of these independently and they follow each other. So you'll see that minute 18 seconds as I adjust the speed down and then click over here. Actually, I think I adjusted the speed down a little bit too far. Up ah, there we do. And this is why I was saying to save your project occasionally. It does sometimes crash if you do something way out of spec like that. Because I was asking it to make the project, let's see, 10, 100, 1,000, uh, yeah, something like 100,000 million times slower. So it broke the software. It is free software. This is reality here. And that's why I did say to save your projects. So I'm going to go ahead and task manager close shot cut. Because once you go white screen like this, it's done. All right, open it back up here. And this is kind of the beauty of something like this. It's live, it's real, it's not a manufacturer demo. Stuff happens. But watch what we have here. Sometimes when that happens, when you open back up, it'll say, hey, you have an abandoned project. But I'm going to go to file. Uh, where, where was our file? I would say file exists. I don't know why it took so long for that to pop up, but it did finally. And there we are, right back where we were before we screwed up. So it does do an auto save, but you need to do an initial save first. You can't always count on the auto save. Sorry, right, so go back to our big hound clown horn file, hit properties, and this time I'm just going to extend out the time that way instead of doing the math otherwise. Hit enter and it expand, expand it out. But that's not enough. No, we want this thing to sound crazy. So I'm going to put it out for, I don't know, 15 seconds there. Looks like it is not cooperating with us for some silly reason, though. So we are going to do this one more time before I just give up on the audio extension filter. I've used it plenty of times. I don't know why it's not cooperating, but it is actually not cooperating right now for some silly reason. It might just be ex going beyond the limit. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, just use Instead of duration, because that seems to be glitching at the moment, use your speed control. And now here we go. Brings the pitch down as well, which is kind of nice. We could bring the pitch back up. We could go into filters, add a filter, add an audio filter, and uh, there actually is no pitch adjustment here. So do if you want to change the pitch and whatnot, probably just do that in Audacity. But there you see, we can drag things out or compress things, which compressing is going to be kind of funny. We're going to speed it up 1.6, 1.7 times. It should be pretty shrill and high. <laughs> That's kind of fun with the clown. So we'll keep that there. All right, let's see what else we have here to play with. 
We have a cemetery video. That's a pretty cool video. I'm gonna grab that, bring it over here. Love the screams. So we're gonna keep the first portion of that and put it here on the timeline. But hey, we got a picture of the cemetery. Now we got a cemetery video. Why would we do the picture of the cemetery? So let's get rid of that fade. Let's get rid of that cemetery picture. Let's get rid of uh, that fade. Because if you keep the fade, watch this. It gets a little weird. The fade includes a little chunk of the video or the picture the fade was going to in the fade. So that's why you see that like triple fade. On. So you got to get rid of that fade. Fade these two together. And then you got a space here. Easy way to fix that. Right click, a remove, and it crunches everything back together. And now your video is more of a flowing night. Nice I know you told them to come get me. <laughs> Do a little fade mix right here. And now we're going to add another video track in here. And this time I'm going to copy this video. I'm going to put it up top here. Select that track. And paste. Oop. If it wants to cooperate with me anyway, I will. There we go. So why would it put a video on top of a video? Actually, I'm not sure what just happened right there. So we're just going to remove that fade real quick and do this clean without it being affected by a fade. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to select up top. I'm going to paste it. Keeps doing a weird little split there, but we will make this work yet. All right. So now I'm going to put these two back together. Let's split it playhead. But I have. Oh, come on and cooperate with me here. Eh, no need to reassemble. My playhead, unfortunately, is being a little goofy, so I'm just going to delete those out. Copy that instead. Move my playhead out of the way this time. Come down and paste. And squeeze it in. We're good to go. So again, why would I put one video on top? Of get me. The reason for that. I'm gonna bring that over. Now, what I'm gonna do. So I'm actually going to get rid of the first half of this video. I'm going to split it to playhead and remove. Oh. Software can be a little silly sometimes. I'm not going to lie. But it's free. There we go. So why do I have one video on top of the other? Because I'm going to add some filters. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fade in this video. Make sure I'm in my video filters. Fade in video. It's going to be adjust opacity instead of fade to black because I don't want to doing that dip to black. And now I'm going to add a text filter. There's different styles of text. There's 3D text, there's standard flat text. Let's see if I can find the 3D text. It's kind of cool. Um, where is it hiding? There it is, 3D text. 
So I'm going to put in my web address, www.haunt.com. It's not my web address. Be nice if I spelled .com right, but you get the point. Now I'm going to play with the size a little bit, reduce it down. The depth goes a little extreme. There we go. Tilt. I'm going to make it face up a little bit because I'm now going to congest your horizontal. I'm just going to bring it to center, which is 50%. But I'm going to bring it down to the bottom of the page so it's out of the way. And perfect. So now what we have is text fading in. Now those audio effects, that's just the computer processing that text fade in, processing the 3D text. Again, that's the more powerful the computer, the better, but you can do without a super powerful computer. But that is how you add text and additional layers on top of existing video. Be cool if there's a way to do that uh, on its own, but this is the way the shortcut works, but again, free software. So that's pretty cool. Now we are going to go ahead and wrap out the video because we have our intro, we have you know, a couple clips, we have a cool clip of the website pop up, and we have some sound effects down bottom here. Oh, hey, look at that. We're gonna go to the audio track real quick, clean that up. Uh, that would be a sign that my computer is glitching out and not happy with me. So we're going to minimize this some. I'm just going to manually drag these over here. Let's see if I can now remove that without goofiness. Nope, I cannot. Here's a very easy fix for the whole thing. What I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, remove that track. I'm going to add an audio track. I'm just going to add that audio file from scratch. I need coffee. <laughs> audio file goes up here first. All right, now I'm going to drag it down. Put it where it belongs so it can fade in. Obviously, I don't need nearly that much audio. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my outro video. I'm going to mix it with this file because that is the visible file. So if I do a mix with this down here, it'll be a little weird unless I have this one also fade out. So I'm going to show you what that looks like both ways. So we've got the text going on. And it just gently fades out to the outro of video. Now, per se, I didn't do it that way. I put it down here. You'd see it'd be a little awkward because you've got the text going on. Actually, let me do the mix. I forgot that little important portion there. and then just boom, it flashes right over. So the mix doesn't actually do anything because it didn't mix with this. However, we can fix that. If we want to do it this way, we go up, add a filter, video filter, and that's going to be a fade out video. And that's also going to be use adjust opacity instead of black. And now we're going to have that same effect. Except this time, text fades out before the fade over takes place. So that's, you can do it either way. You can fade up here and the text will be there the whole time or do it down here and the text fades out before because you told it to fade out so you could have that smooth transition. And that is the video. So I'm going to go over here. So at the very end of it going to split at playhead for the audio track get rid of all this otherwise you're gonna have a video that goes black 
and then it has audio for a long time after the video is over. And I've made that mistake and uploaded that mistake to YouTube and realized, oops, YouTube doesn't like that, obviously. So I'm going to go down to the audio here, hit a filter, and we're going to do a fade out audio. Oops, audio filters, there we go. Fade out audio. And it does a nice little gentle fade out there. Although I'm going to extend a little bit. You can do that obviously up here by changing the duration. Or if you notice that little look at that, I'm just going to drag it. It's nice. It's easy. It's clean. And that is the project. So now I'm going to bring this back up a little bit bigger. You can always do a preview on your timeline here. Just play it back, watch it up top, but it's not going to give you a true idea of what you're going to see because obviously you saw some hiccups here and there. So what we're going to look at, we're going to look at our video clips and properties. So my intro is 1080p video, 1920 by 1080 standard HD. My video clip here, the same. 29.97 frames a second, 25 frames per second. So I've got a couple different frame rates. Uh, my outro is actually only 720, boo. But anyway, so when we go to export, I usually go to advanced. And I'm personally, I like 4K. Most of my newer stuff is all in 4K, but I'll do 1080. So this isn't too painful. Uh, if you filmed at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 30 frames a second looks pretty nice. YouTube will do 30 frames a second. However, most of this was natively at 25 frames a second. So I'm just going to leave it there. That gives it a more cinematic look. And we have what we need there. Now, when it comes to codecs, I usually keep it this uh, 264 codec. You can up the quality per se you're doing some production work or whatnot. You can max that all the way up to 100. It's going to take longer to render, but your video quality is going to be higher. It's also going to take a whole lot more storage. So depending on the quality you're working on is how high you want that quality to be. Audio, pretty standard. Um, I usually just keep it right where it's at. And other, that's some crazy stuff you don't need to worry about. Use hardware encoder, that uh, it's, it's still not perfect. I usually just uh, let my computer's CPU do the work for me. I have a graphics card, but it's not super great. It's enough to play some basic games. If you really were to go into configuration and play with that a lot, you could probably make an improvement, but I, I doubt uh, if you're using free video software for a show that you're super, super duper video card and tech editing savvy. So I just leave it as is, and it has done fine for me for over 100 YouTube videos. So I'm gonna hit export file here. Tell it where it wants to go. I'm going to export this on to a solid state drive just to make things go faster. I'm actually gonna put it on my desktop on said solid state drive. No, I'm not. I'm gonna just put it on the drive itself. There's not too many files here and it's easy enough to find. So up here, jobs, that is your rendering. I'm editing off of a solid state drive and onto a solid state drive. So this is going really fast. If you have a computer with a conventional spinning hard drive, this will be a little bit slower. Also gonna pull up my resource monitor on my computer. It is maxing out my CPU. And it's just gonna do that. If you're on a laptop or whatnot, you're probably gonna thermal throttle. Uh, if your laptop is a cooling fan, it might sound like a jet engine taking off. That is because rendering is hard work. You also notice it's slowed down as it's going because even my desktop computer is thermal throttling a little bit. I don't have a temperature meter on here, but yeah, it's the name of the game. Also, memory as it's going, it's going to use a little bit more. And we're up to, yeah, 8.2 8 gigs of our memory used. But yeah, the CPU is the limiting factor here. You can see that the disk is working on yeah 3%, 30%. So the computer is very happy. <laughs> Actually, there's a Zoom eating up all of our internet as well. That's fun. 
But yeah, CPU is, ah, there we go. CPU dropped off, render is done. Close that out and open up the file. Let's see where we're at here. We were somewhere on the OS drive, I believe it was, or did I throw it on the data drive? I threw it on the data drive. So that was shot cut. There it is, Shotcut Zoom class. Yeah, there's our intro. I know you told them to come get me. Audio. So yeah, there you go. That is a finished 25 second audio video clip using Shotcut free video editing software. Obviously that was a little dirty around the corners because just a demo for a class here. Um, but if I was actually you know, focusing on this, uh, not leaning back, talking into a microphone, thinking about the software, not just the project, you can do a lot with this. Now, I always like to say go back and just make sure to save your project because you, you can come back in this. Per se, you saw something in the edit you didn't like, or per se, you get a better chunk of video, or you know, one of your customers that was super happy to be on video and gave you consent and everything when you're filming sees it on Facebook and says, oh, never mind. You can come back in here. You can grab that video clip you can yank it right out. I'm not going to remove though. And I'm going to I'll take those out first. I'm just going to pop that up here. So now I still have that open spot on my timeline. I'm going to go down, grab, um, I don't even know what I'm going to grab. I'm just going to make the clown car go a little bit slower. I'm going to go to properties, slow it down a little bit, do the same thing for the cemetery. I'm going to drag it over. Oop. Oopsie daisy. And get that out of there. Drag my cemetery clip over. Drag it out a little bit. I'm not saying this is a perfect fix, but if you're really in a jam, and again, that's why we saved software crash, stretch it too far and too hard, but this is a way you can get around it. So that is Shotcut. Free software, pretty powerful, has a couple issues, not gonna lie, uh, but at least you go into it knowing what you're doing. They're always adding stuff to it. Uh, looks like they've added, uh, what is this? Um, corner pin, all sorts of filters and whatnot. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube out there, tutorials on how to do X, Y, and Z. It, it is very powerful software. You saw there's a whole lot of different filters out there that I don't even touch. Uh, there's some tutorials here on the Shotcut website. Uh, just kind of giving you an idea of the software, a quick overview, and an, an honest view. Like you saw it crashed a couple times on us. It usually doesn't crash too much if you're moving around uh, intentionally. Plus, I'm running Zoom on the computer, and that is eating some of my resources. Uh, yeah, so CPU is running 57%. And that is just Zoom eating up resources. So if you're not running Zoom, you're not running video games or anything in the background, it's going to be a little bit more stable for you. Uh, even Chrome does eat up memory. So if you find your RAM is a limiting factor, eh, shut down Chrome. That should help you out some. But pretty cool software. Hope everyone enjoyed. I think we may do a class on like how to build a website with Wix or Google site, something like that in the next week or so. And uh, stay tuned. Feel free to uh, 
check out on YouTube. We're going to have this up on there as a replay. Also, have, we'll have the link for shotcut.org. Um, I'll put up a link for that YouTube audio library that works really well for free music, background music, sound effects, and all. And uh, you can see all the links here from shotcut.org for uh, training and video. Oh, yeah, there you go, free tutorial videos on YouTube. That takes you back to here. But there's a ton out there, a lot of features. You can do blur out, you can do uh, basic special effects, not a whole lot there, but it's out there. So take care, have a good night, and uh, thanks for joining. <laughs>